Hey all, Ryan the Tone Geek here today, and I will be showing you uh, my LT Spice simulation of the John Mayer 2 Rock Signature Circuit. So I'm going to try to record uh, the webcam, so if it looks really awful, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm going to try to record and uh, my screen and my webcam at the same time. Let's see how this goes. All right, so... Let's go into my remote desktop where I have LT Spice. So here's a quick crash course on LT Spice. Um, it's a circuit simulation, and I went ahead and recorded all the um, schematic for the John Mayer 2 Rock signature, uh, uh, the layout from Amplify Nation. So up here on the upper left, we have your source signal coming in from the guitar, and then pretty much everything downstream. You got all the tubes. And we have the reverb circuit up here. And then down here is uh, the power section for the power amp side of things. But yeah, so basically what I wanted to kind of do is run the simulation and kind of give you a quick overview on that. Um, every the, the treble, the bass, and the mid is set in the middle right now, middle position. And I could tell that by where the wiper blade is. Um, and that's the same on all of them. The gain is also in the middle, so it's 0.5, because uh, that's going to show where the 220 Pico Farad bright switch, which is that right there, um, how that comes in play. So without further ado, I'll run the circuit, and it's going to step through all the commands and run the frequency analysis. Yep, so here we are. I'm going to take my probe, <laughs> not too many dirty jokes here, uh, and kind of show you what's going on a little bit. Here's our tone stack curve uh, before it hits the gain. So basically the, the product of having everything in the middle, this is what the tone stack looks like. Um, bright uh, Middle is off and a dip, deep switch is on, just as an awareness. Now comparing that to the output since the gain is lower at this point um, that's why you see the dip and if I double click that again this is what the curve looks like with the bright switch on now if I wanted to remove the bright switch uh, we'll go over to cut I'll just cut it out and then we'll run the simulation again so pay attention up here that on this curve if I just run the simulation it's going to keep my probe in the same spot So step through, and yeah, and pay attention over here, and we're going to see it drop significantly. Yeah, so that's basically the um, the bright cap is, is disabled here, and the bright really comes in play more when the um, the gain is at the lower, basically the lower settings. The when you turn it up all the way, the the gain. The bright cap is pretty much negated because this will be a short through here. Um, so I'm going to put the bright cap back. I'm just going to undo that. And remember, um, ba basically the the frequency range for a guitar is about 100 hertz, a little bit lower, all the way up to like 20 something, or uh, sorry, 2,000 kilohertz or 2,000 hertz, which is two kilohertz. Um, I'm a little under the weather today, so please excuse me. Uh, so yeah, so basically the, the reverb is tapped out of the gain. So where, where your gain control is, you know, how much gain is, is basically being pumped into the reverb. Um, and you have this thing right here, this little uh, resistor um, capacitor network. And what that does is that kind of shapes the top end curve here and when I say that the, the 2000 uh, Hertz is the upper end of the guitar that does not include the um, octaves that go up higher so where you're gonna get the octaves uh, basically that top end bite is through those octaves um, and that you'll see throughout here so this is very bright as it is basically the tone stack is really at this point of the circuit really high and this resistor trans um, 
network here kind of uh, and capacitor network brought down the overall brightness at this point. So I just want to kind of show that. All right, stepping through the changes here. This on the Steel String Singer circuit is where the step filters come in. The John Mayer circuit um, doesn't have the step filters, but it does shape a little bit of the curve. So now you see like this top end roll off, and that's going. To, that's the, basically the predefined. So here's one thousand, uh, one kilohertz, two kilohertz, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. Or if I just looked at my little uh, down here, we're looking at like the top end, which is around six thousand kilohertz, is rolling off at this point. And here's the dry out. So down here is where some more fun is. And it's the reverb. So one of the, the kind of unique features of the John Mayer is the uh, capacitor. Where is it? Here it is. Um, 0.01 microfarad capacitor. Now if I take a measurement here, uh, well, you can see where, where the reverb comes in play in that um, example, but let's just say right now this wiper is at uh, halfway. So that's again the setting is at noon. Your your potentiometer is at noon. Let's cut out the bright the this capacitor and see what happens. So we'll just wait a little bit while it simulates. All right, so you see that the, the reverb is actually tightened up a little bit, um, and it, it's, it's a little less loose, but it also uh, more or less kind of darkened this side down here. So let me just resubmit the, so that's now back in the circuit. We'll just wait for it to go through its frequency analysis. Yeah, so basically, it's, it's more or less uh, brightening up things, but it's also kind of making this really funky. Um, some of the John Mayer, um, like on the Ampli or on the Sierra Tone, they have this value uh, change, you know, different values if you wanted to. So let's just see what this looks like when you go to um, what another setting is. The, whoops, that's not right. Change that out. Forgot the extra zero. So there we go. Uh, it's kind of tightening up that reverb, making the, the response a little bit different. But I'm going to put this back to the default, uh, the Amplify Nation value. So that way the rest of the simulation is according to the Amplify Nation schematic. Um, what kind of is interesting is the contour down here and how that affects the tone. So what we're going to do is, uh, if I take my probe again, let's see where I combined. So after the, the reverb circuit, the um, reverb and the dry is mixed together. You see this um, resistor network. You have 120 out here, and then you have 68. So the wet output is a little bit, um, it's going to come in a little bit harder once it's mixed in than the dry. That's probably by design, um, you know, based on your, your, your send and receive. I realize this is really boring, but electronics is not really boring, but you know, it's hard to make it exciting, put it that way. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at the um, the contour. What does that actually do? So I'm going to change this to a variable that I've already defined elsewhere in the circuit called wiper. So I'm going to close that out. And what that's going to do is actually plot uh where is it i'll show you up here it's going to step through 
the parameter wiper. So you see here, step parameter wiper, um, and yeah, start value, stop value, and then increments. So it's going to show like the high end, what it does to the high end. It basically rolls it off or boosts the high end a little bit. And also there, there's a little bit of a mid response here. So if I um, click the load here, which is the pretending to be an eight ohm speaker, this is this is what we're getting with the um, with the contour, which is really kind of interesting. So we have when the contour is boosted, all the way you see the um, the treble is is still preserved on there, and then when you roll that contour back, it, in the middle most position it's it's up here, um, and then as you keep on decreasing it quickly rolls off that high end. So this will be kind of result in like a really muddy sort of tone. Just thought that was kind of interesting. So I'm going to put that back to the middle position where you typically see John Mayer put his contour. So we'll just run it in the middle position and see what that looks like. Just give it a second. Yeah, so we see the, the trebles is really up there, uh, especially with that bright switch. All right, so what else can we show here? Um, I can show the curve uh, without the deep switch on. I personally really like the deep switch. It seems like John Mayer does too. So we're going to cut it out for now and run and see what that difference looks like. So we're going to notice is a shift down here. Yeah, so that so basically it really scoops the mids, um, and you're going to see a little bit shift to the left. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot. Whoops. Here, and then I can toggle between the two, and then we can really see the difference. So I'm going to put the deep switch back in. Run the analysis. All right, and now take another screenshot. Go to my desktop. And then we're going to toggle between the two. Pull it over here, let it load. All right, so here's the deep switch on, deep switch off, deep switch on, deep switch off. Another thing to note is is the bass is boost a little bit. I had to, I wish I put the, but if you look here, um, with the deep switch on, we're about uh, negative eight dB, and with the deep switch off. Um, you know, we're sitting here around negative 12 dB. I should have adjusted the scale to matter to match, but more or less that's kind of sort of what we're getting here. All right, so what else can I show you? I'm going to make these files available um, to everyone, so please uh, look in my description below. And I'm sorry that this is really dry. <laughs> a, I'm not feeling too well. And B, the, the topic, you know, I'm kind of learning here after I modeled everything um, and changing values. Like I changed these. This is different between the CR tone and the, so these two resistors right here. Uh, CR tone is 100K and then 110K. And I changed those. That didn't make a difference um, in anything. But I thought there might be a difference. So basically, the long and short of it is, I'm using LT Spice to look at the differences in the two rock settings and the Sierra tone. Oh, that's really important. A lot of people were asking me about, you know, well, what what is going on under the hood when we do um, when you when you add that jumper on the bass knob? Well, let me take 
I could show you actually in, in a graph. So once I'm done plotting here, um, I'll make sure that we're we're highlighting the load, which is the speaker. Okay, so we have the speaker highlighted. Right now, this is with the um, the base jumper on. So let's just see what happens when you when you cut that jumper out. This this is really kind of interesting. Notice how much brighter. I'll, I'll okay. Let's do this. Let's find out what. So right now we're at four to negative fourteen. Let's see what the auto scale is. Okay. So I'm going to take a screenshot here. And then we'll cut that resistor out, or that jumper out. So now we got to do 4 to negative 16. So after this analysis runs, we'll go negative 16. And we'll take a screenshot here. And we can show you the difference. So go to Finder. Let's, let's make sure preview is closed. Yes, it is. So that is the Sierra Tone, and here is the. Let me just double check. We just did the analysis. So the last thing we did was the um, Sierra Tone. All right, so let's toggle and look at the difference. Okay, you can see the brightness and then the um, the EQ response on the base side. Pretty interesting, right? So anyway, more or less, you can dial in um, each other's tones. Uh, like the Sierra tone can sound like the other one without the jumper. But you really have to boost the base on your um, on your knobs, and then draw back the treble. Just kind of want to show that. Also, look down here. The basically where the the middle point is brought up. So that's about it. I just wanted to show you. Um, the only other little difference is this uh, down here. This is the feedback resistor. Um, basically, what this feedback or global negative feedback resistor is changes the overall gain. So the lower the value of this is, um, the cleaner the amp is going to be. But it's also going to um, change the response a little bit. So. Basically, it's going to be a little bit tighter, a little bit cleaner with the lower value, um, but it's also going to be a lot quieter of an amp because it reduces the gain. But if we raise this, it's going to make the amp a little bit looser, a little bit dirtier, um, because not as much signal is being fed back into the circuit to um, basically clean up the signal. So that's kind of interesting. The, the amp does get dirty. Uh, it's because this is uh, 12K off the 8 ohm tap. So if you watch the Anderton's video, you, you're, you're going to hear um, Danish Pete <laughs> kind of roll back the, the gain control. Uh, it's because the amp got dirty at one point. <coughs> but anyway, I hope I feel better soon. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm sorry it's super lame, but it's electronics, and and I wish I could make it more interesting than it is. But that's, that's what the long and short of it. So until next time, see ya.